rolls along a road, it is bumped up and down by the irregularities of the surface. Something has to be done to prevent the wheel throwing the car up and down at the same time. This model shows what would happen if the car followed exactly the vertical movement of the wheel. And this is what would happen if the movement of the wheel had no effect on the car. This is an ideal which can never be reached. However, a wheel can be fixed to the car flexibly by using something that has give and take, like a springboard. A thin piece of wood such as this lath bends easily. It is resilient. That is to say, it springs quickly back to shape. If we shake a block of wood fixed to the middle of the lath, it will move up and down much further than blocks fixed on the two ends, because the lath acts as a spring and absorbs most of the movement at the middle. We can adapt this idea to cars. The bouncing axle takes the place of the hand shaking the block, and a spring absorbs the movement. When a spring is bent, the ends come closer together. For example, an archer has to bend his bow to bring its ends nearer together so that he can string it. The spring is fixed to a hinge called a shackle. This allows the ends of the spring to move away from and towards each other as it bends. But a single spring is not strong enough for a car. Something is needed with the strength of a block and the resilience of a lath. Several laths put together are nearly as strong as a block. Yet they are still resilient. So in practice, a car spring is made up of several leaves, each one shorter than the one above. When a spring is made, the leaves are first cut to length out of a long metal strip. The top leaf has to be fitted to the chassis. The ends are bent over to make fixing easy. The ends of the under leaves are tapered to make them pack closely together. Clips prevent the leaves shifting. A spring can be fixed between the wheels and the chassis frame in different ways. Usually a spring is fixed lengthways, one to each wheel. A spring must absorb the bumps of the road so that the passengers are not bounced about. It must save the engine from sudden shocks. When a car stops, the body is pitched forward onto the front spring. When a car starts, the body falls back onto the rear springs. When a car goes round a corner, the weight of the body is thrown onto the outside springs. The more violently these things happen, the greater is the strain put on the spring. Leaf springs by themselves are not enough. When anything resilient has been set in motion, it vibrates for some time afterwards. Like a diving board. The amount a spring will vibrate can be worked out quite easily. It behaves like a pendulum. A long pendulum swings slowly. A short pendulum swings quickly. 
A long spring gives soft, comfortable riding, but it presses the wheels slowly back onto the road after the bump. On the other hand, a short, stiff spring gives uncomfortable riding, but presses the wheel quickly back on the road. So, springing is a compromise. Springs must be long enough for comfort, yet short enough to keep the wheel firmly on the road. Axles and wheels are made as light as possible. If they are heavy, they will strike the spring heavy blows when they bounce. For the sake of comfort, shocks must be smothered quickly. Leaf springs are helped by their makeup. When a spring bends, the leaves slide over each other. The friction between them tends to smother the shocks, but there is still a lot of movement left. This has to be overcome by using shock absorbers. There are several different kinds, but they are all simply stiff elbows. With one arm fixed to the chassis and the other to the axle. They differ in the method of stiffening the elbow. One way is to interleave part of each arm at the elbow joint so that several broad surfaces rub over each other. Screwing the surfaces more tightly together increases the friction between them and makes the shock absorber stiffer to move. Friction shock absorbers are sometimes used on sports cars. Most cars have hydraulic shock absorbers of one type or another. Whatever their design, the principle is the same. A liquid is forced through a narrow passage from one chamber to another. The passage can be made narrower to slow up the flow of the liquid. This makes the shock absorber stiffer. Hydraulic shock absorbers are adjusted before they are fitted to the car. There are no exposed edges to let in dirt or wet, but the oil in the chambers must be kept at the right level. A shock absorber is fitted between the spring and the chassis frame. It quickly smothers the vibration of the spring and helps to take any sudden strain. There are several ways of springing a car. So far we have described the conventional system in which a single axle joins two wheels together. When one wheel goes over a bump or into a hole, the other wheel is affected. When a moving wheel is tilted to one side, it tries to turn in that direction. This means that the steering mechanism must be strong. Some manufacturers fix each front wheel independently, so that when one wheel moves up or down, it does not affect the other. There are several ways of fixing the wheels independently. Sometimes a leaf spring is fitted across the chassis from wheel to wheel. A metal link called a wishbone hinges the wheels firmly to the chassis frame. By using more leaf springs, the wheels can be firmly held without a wishbone link. Coil springs are often used. Sometimes a coil spring is fitted inside a cylinder. When a coil spring is compressed, the metal is twisted. It doesn't bend like a leaf spring. It untwists because it is resilient. A straight piece of metal is also resilient and can be twisted. To be as flexible as a coil spring, it would have to be long. For convenience, a short bar can be made as flexible as a long one by putting it inside a steel tube and fixing them together at one end. The free end of the tube is fixed to the chassis. The free end of the bar is fixed through a lever to the wheel. When the wheel dances up and down, it twists the steel bar. Independently sprung wheels do 
do not need an axle beam from one wheel to the other. So the chassis frame, instead of being upswept to take the front axle, is brought closer to the ground. Steering becomes easier and the car holds the road better. The rear axle is much heavier than the front axle because it has to carry the weight of the differential and propeller shaft. Some manufacturers fix the differential casing to the chassis frame so that the rear wheels can be independently sprung. The wheels are driven through flexible joints and move up and down independently. New fast roads bring new problems. As surfaces become smoother, designers can concentrate on safe and comfortable springing at higher speeds.